call the meeting to order. In accordance with the open meeting law, the board states for the record that this meeting is being recorded by NORCAM and may be recorded by other local media. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So we're doing first order of business is our minutes. Madam Chair, I move to approve the September 30th, 2019 regular session minutes as written. Motion? I guess I'll second. I have a motion <laughs> and a second by Mr. O'Leary. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Next are the October 7th regular session. Uh, Madam Chair, I move to approve the September 30th, 2019 okay. executive session. Do we, I'm sorry, next is executive session. Okay, I have a motion. I do have a second. second. I have a motion and a second by Mr. O'Leary. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Madam Chair, I move to approve the October 7th, 2019 regular session minutes as written. Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Madam Chair, I move to approve the October 16th, 2019 strategic planning session minutes as written. Yes, our fun does not just occur on Monday evenings, folks. <laughs> I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Motion, a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, we have a proclamation. Veterans Day. Madam Chair, I move to read and sign the Veterans Day proclamation. Shall we read it? Did, we get a sec did I get a second? Is there sure. any? May someone second, second. that? Sure. Thank you. Yes, <laughs> please, for the record. Let's read that nice, loud, and clear for all to hear. You want me to read it? Absolutely. All righty. <clears throat> Whereas on Veterans Day, America becomes one in honoring our veterans to commemorate their legacy of honor, pride, courage, and sacrifice. America is strong because of their profound love of this great nation. We as a nation must support our veterans, for we would not be in America if not for their sacrifices. And whereas on this day we honor our warriors for continuing to secure and safeguard our borders, emulating our forefathers by carrying on the values and traditions that were instilled throughout the generations. They continue to serve in harm's way, keep them in prayer. And whereas on this day we must be ever mindful of our veterans struggling with mental health issues, addictions, and homelessness. We as a compassionate nation must be proactive and work together to assist and guide them. And whereas on this day we recognize and thank our Vietnam veterans for their service and sacrifice, your wounds and scars continue to consume your lives. Many continue to suffer the effects of Agent Orange. Many lives have been shortened. Many families have to endure the pain of losing a loved one suffering the after effects of war. We will continue to stand by you. And whereas on this day, we honor our Gold Star families who have sacrificed the ultimate, keep them in your prayers. They will forever carry the legacy of their loved one through memories. For those who have loved ones missing in action or are held captive, can continue to pray for their return. And whereas on this day, we renew our commitment to our children through guidance and education, the importance of honor, respect, and appreciation for the valor and sacrifice our veterans and warriors have made. Continue to educate them on the history of this great nation. Now, therefore, we, the Select Board of North Reading, do hereby proclaim 
that Veterans Day shall be celebrated on this 11th day of November 2019 in the town of North Reading. We encourage you to continue to display the American flag with pride on your homes, offices, town buildings to recognize the valor and sacrifice of our veterans and warriors through ceremony and prayer. Given at the select board meeting this 28th day of October 2019 by Chairwoman of the Select Board, Catherine Manupelli. So we have a motion to read and sign, and can we get a, a vote on that motion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And would anyone like to have any further comment? Mr. Schultz. Uh, Susan, you do a great job with our veterans, and we're going to talk about you in a bit. And I think it's rather apropos as our United States Special Forces did a great job this weekend taking mm -hmm. care of the mastermind of ISIS, and I think that is a win for America. Yes. And it, you know, Amen. These are active duty, not veterans per se, but to them, all the active duty people far and wide and all the veterans, good special selfish shout out to my father who's a Vietnam veteran. God bless you. Well said. Any further comments? Okay, I think it's a nice segue into our next order of business. So we're going to recognize our veterans agent, Susan Magner, who's here before us. Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I'm pleased to, to, that we have Susan here this evening. Um, I think the board, you know, through its discussions in the budget process or other, uh, otherwise, recognizes that we have excellent department heads um, in all of our departments. But um, we're especially excited this evening to be discussing uh, a third party, the Department of Veteran Services, recognizing one of our department heads, Susan Magner, who is here this evening. Susan was originally hired by the town of North Reading as secretary in the town clerk's office. And I see the town clerk is here this evening, so thank you, Barbara. Uh, in October of 2007, so she's been with us 12 years. In February of 2010, she was appointed Director of Veteran Services for the town. And um, from my discussions with her and others, she immediately began working on one of the larger events that we had, which was the 10th anniversary of the September 11th um, uh, attack uh, on our country. Um, the remembrance that she put together was significant here, and I know many uh, here in the room were in attendance uh, at that. So um, that was only her really a little over a year being in, uh, in the position. And since then, um, she's continued moving forward, you know, at, at times quietly in the background, ha ha helping all of our veterans with their needs, whether it be paying their bills, um, paying their rent, um, getting access to quality health care, uh, facilitating their interaction, um, not just with the state government, but with the federal government through our VA facilities. I'm sure she spent countless hours at, at both Bedford and uh, Jamaica Plain helping our veterans. Um, to the point where, uh, on a couple of occasions, I've gotten letters from folks outside of North Reading who have said, hey, I, I, I ran into Susan and she gave me some great advice, you know, which is uh, fantastic to hear as well. So we're, we're really fortunate uh, in, in the work that Susan has done. Most recently, as I think we're all aware, Susan um, put quite a bit of effort, to, uh, not only in coordinating the visit of the Wall That Heals here to town in August, but also securing it coming here. And that was all done pretty much in the background by Susan, you know, talking with the different departments that would be involved, including Parks and Recreation, which is here this, uh, this evening. I know Maureen was um, on site and, and that uh, Lynn and Marty and the folks in the department were very helpful with the, the visit. Um, but working on that before it showed up in front of us in January of this year when we, we learned it was going to be coming to visit. And um, so we, we get to see all these things firsthand and, 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 and have benefited from it. But the State Department of Veteran Services recognized that at well, as well. So last week at her conference in Lemonster, I believe, is that right? Um, the uh, State Department of Veteran Services recognized our Susan Magner as the Veteran Service Officer of the Year. And so we're here this evening to congratulate her. Susan uh, is accompanied by her partner, Larry, who's sitting there. Larry, if you want to raise your hand, say hi. Uh, and also um, Al DeSalvo, who's a member of our Veterans uh, Events Committee and has been active in helping Susan with her efforts. So we thank you both for being here this evening. Um, I'll turn it over to you, Madam Chair. We thought this was a great opportunity to recognize Susan, hopefully to take a photograph with her and with the uh, award as well, if that's okay. Definitely, sure. Uh, I know the members have comments. Mr. O'Leary? Uh, I tell you, just the... Uh, Talk about a perfect venue for this 
for this wall. I mean, it's like it was made for it. Mm -hmm. Maybe, and uh, you had the vision. Oh, yeah. You had the vision, and you must have taken measurements ahead of time because it really <laughs> did fit perfectly. And the um, uh, you know, the attendance was fantastic. I'm, I'm sorry, the coverage wasn't as good as it should have been, you know, as far as uh, television. But it wasn't due to lack of lack of efforts. But I, I'll tell you, you know, with, uh, my wife and I, she and I were down there virtually every night, and we saw it late at night when nobody, you know, like middle of the night, you had people manning it, and it was absolutely fantastic. What a uh, a terrific, terrific opportunity that you, uh, again, you had the vision. Uh, some of us were a little bit skeptical at first, I will admit, and, uh, and I'm glad you talked us into it because it was fantastic. What a wonderful uh, tribute and uh, wonderful opportunity for the town and the, the area, the whole uh, community, the area community to come out. So congratulations and uh, congratulations on your award. Yeah, well deserved. Mr. Walmer? I, I, I've known Susan for years from the SSAT work we've done, and Susan's always been a great advocate for the vets, the disabled in town. And, uh, and uh, her heart is in the right place. I've always been impressed from that point of view, and I've also watched her have to leave many meetings because people are coming day in and day out looking for her services. So um, uh, everything Susan's done has been great, and I, you know, I was honored to speak at, the, at, at, at that night at the wall, and it was very, very, uh, very impressive and very, it was emotional for me afterwards, actually, so. Yeah, yeah, it was really very impressive. So I, I have always appreciated everything you've done. It's been an honor to be with you. Mr. Schultz. Now, granted, I live across the street from it, so <laughs> I didn't have far to go, but I was over there every night, and it was really nice during the day, but it was absolutely stunning at night when it was all lit up and kind of glowing in the dark. And a uh, couple of things, it was, it was just an amazing event for a lot of reasons. Um, I just mentioned my father. I found his bunkmate who passed away in Vietnam on the wall, which was really cool for me because it was, you know, I wasn't around back then, but those guys were. And um, it reminds me of I have an eight, or a, a child who's a senior in high school right now. And I was thinking back then, kids that age were like six months away from being on a plane going across the ocean. It really kind of sat on me. And, and the other thing that really touched me was it wasn't so much the wall. It was, it might have been a Tuesday night when everything came in, Tuesday or Wednesday, whenever the, the truck came in. The faces and the tears on the veterans as that truck came by really struck me. It was just an amazing event. It was very cathartic and well done. It's, I can't say enough superlatives. It was really a great event. And Steve's right. I think you had an inch to spare on each side of that yard, <laughs> uh, that grass. I mean, it yeah, literally was shoehorned in. Yeah. yeah, perfectly. It was just a tremendous event. Uh, well done. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I couldn't agree more. Um, I think we're just so fortunate to have you. Um, I could cry now thinking about that night. I, I was there at night um, doing a shift and- I saw you there. Was so yeah. honored, was just so honored to, to be there. And once you were there, the, just the feeling in the air, the, it, it was just awesome. Um, and I agree, I wish we could have kept it. <laughs> I, I loved it. <laughs> Um, and I also found um, one of my neighbors, her maiden name I saw was on there. Um, and I called her and she said, oh my God, I think that's my uncle. And it ended up, she brought the kids down and it was. So they were just so excited to find that and see that. So I just I wanna thank you so much. It was just a great thing for our town. It made me so proud and it was just wonderful. Thank you. I agree, and I thought, I think that even the delivery ceremony of that wall that healed, I, I'm going to echo everything that they all said and just let you know what a valued employee you are. But even from the delivery of that wall, that was something just amazing to be in attendance at, mm -hmm. to see how stirred people were for that and for the purpose behind that, what that wall was about, and to know that you brought that here and you coordinated that effort, and that was amazing. And I also think that there's all of these different occasions that you commemorate with us and for the town and coordinate for us to be able to have a place to go and voices to be heard and all the coordination that goes into all of these things that you plan for us. And you're sort of the person that wears your heart on your sleeve 
but you're you're always <coughs> there to bring to us and highlight to us what the this population that you serve directly needs and to help bring it to our attention from the littlest things that you do like those coins that you got to give to mm -hmm. members that are about to go away to just give them some commemorative piece from us as a community to know that we're thinking of them to the monumental things that you did all of that effort and work being one of the only communities that that wall that heals was given to for that time frame it was just tremendous and that all of the efforts that you do from those smaller things that are really monumental things to those larger things are amazing to us and we're so grateful that you're here and working on these efforts, highlighting to us what this particular segment of our community needs and how many veterans there are out there that maybe people don't even know about or notice. And I love when you come to do the budget hearing, when you take that opportunity to, to highlight, here's the need, here's what I'm working on, here's how many cases I have, and here's the areas of improvement that we can make. So I think you should keep doing that. I hope we're not s commemorating you tonight because you're going somewhere. No, <laughs> you're sticking around. And I just want to say thank you from all the simpler acts that you do to the larger acts that you do, all the highlighting that you do to us about this community and what this community needs from us and what we as a community can do to remember, especially the veterans. So thank you for everything you do. And it, do you want to have, do you want to say anything? <laughs> yeah, I just want to, as we said, I had the vision for many years. That's cool. um, but again, um, I'll reiterate, it wasn't, it, you can't do it as one person, it's a village, it's a village that makes it happen. And you know, I had my right arm right here. <laughs> And Maureen and Marty and Larry putting up with <laughs> putting up with me my long hours and and but he was there every <coughs> single day working with me on the long hours as well um, and then all the volunteers and just to hear the stories of the kids that I'm hearing when I go places um, that you know they really took the time to have them work with the <coughs> educational piece of it. And it just, you know, it, it's just something that I feel that the, the kids want to learn, and they really do. They take an interest in it, and, and uh, even my nephew was so interested. He came back every day in between shifts from work, and, um, you know, helping the elders and out in their wheelchairs and learning their stories, and, and that's what it's all about. I mean, don't want the history to go away. Right. You know, you want it to... <coughs> keep on them, and because and as they all get older, I mean, I raised four, you know, all of a sudden the, the history books now are like huge to them, and everything's history, 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 and, and reading about those things, but those are the things they should be doing when they're younger too. So, but to be able to bring pieces of history like that here, it says a lot, you know, so um, as far as the award, I was, you know, totally dumbfounded. I'm actually literally up in my room icing my sore back. <laughs> I think called my name, so um, <laughs> I got a call from the from the secretary afterwards, <laughs> but um, to congratulate me. But um, um, I really um, was totally surprised by the whole thing, and uh, you know, but it's it's it is a work of love. It's a I put my heart and soul in it. I do, and um, and I enjoy every minute of it. It's the best thing I've ever done for a job. So. Call it a job, really. It's more like a, a way of life. Great. Mr. Gilberto. Before we hopefully take a photograph, I just want to recognize a couple of other folks. So, Susan is an active member in our human services team, two other members of which are here. So, Jen Ford, the youth services director, is in the back. Mm -hmm. Hi, Jen. And then Mary Prenny, the elder services director, is also with us. And uh, I know. Uh, Mary made sure there was a special surprise in Sue's office when she got back from her conference this week by decorating it. So, Susan, uh, so Mary, thank I you for doing that. I had the pleasure of trying working with Sue almost every day. She did a great job at the wall. She did a great job at parades. But she does a great job at the wall. every day working to people. She does a great job at the But she does a great job every day working to people that she truly cares about, compassionate about, and, and she gets the job done. It is an honor working with this woman. Mm -hmm. 
Thanks, Mary. And I also want to recognize uh, Amy Dechar in the back from DPW. Thanks for coming tonight, Amy. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to say something. Where I worked in the veterans for 12 years, so I know what Sue does every day. And she does make a huge difference in people's lives. And she makes sure that they're not homeless, they're fed, um, if they have medical needs. And this, she does it every single day. And she does it in a far greater scale than I ever did. And um, she just blows doors on, on things like that. And people are so appreciative of her. And um, she just makes a difference in people's lives every single day. So it's, yeah. it's, it's, it is an honor to have her here. She is definitely a great asset. Thanks, that's, Mark. that's the same thing I was going to say. You guys are all recognizing the big events that you see her do, but we, she had a wall for many years with veterans, and, and now she's down the hall, but just seeing the day-to-day -day people that really count on her, like they're her, they're her, she's their life director. They come in, and without her, there's a lot of souls out there that wouldn't be around right now. I think she really is an emotional support, and she, boy, she dig deep looking for the services they need, and she really helps. And you know, I'm a mother of a son who's serving right now, and so I'm just so appreciative of what she does for everyone that serves. It's amazing. That's great. You're a mother of a son that's serving right now, too, right? I have one that's still serving. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyone else want to add any comments? <laughs> we like the good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we could offer a final round of applause and then yes. take a picture. Yes. Congratulations.
don't either. Fun. <laughs> I don't. I don't either. <laughs> Right. You'll have to earn your pay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Awesome. That was nice. That was so All nice. All right. And look who's left here. So. Our, our, our audience. perfect attendance people. <laughs> we got to get an award for you guys. We expect that now. <laughs> All right, we are on to next order business, which is board members' reports. Mr. O'Leary? Uh, nothing other than we uh, continue to uh, proceed and progress on the, uh, the water project and hope to come to some conclusion rather shortly, uh, getting a lot more cooperation from the town of Andover and moving forward on the permitting process. So hopefully we'll have an update uh, in a month or so. Things are looking Things are progressing. Good. Mr. Good. Walner. Uh, just um, uh, for the CO, COA and the SSAT, um, I thank you for signing their application. That came back officially from AARP. It's a lot of initials. Official. Official. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of acronyms going on here. Um, <laughs> but anyways, Kate signed, and then they're going to regroup. I think they're coming to us either on the 4th or the 18th to present what the next steps are and how they're going to implement that for the town so as to make us age friendly. Um, and there's a there's a very specific plan that they're following. So they've been, as their liaison, they've been kind of writing me, letting me know what's going on. I've been participating in some of their meetings, which is good. I continue to stalk the EDC just to try to provide some input from the outside. Um, and then Andy and I have been going to the facilities master plan. You're, you're the liaison. I'm just kind of sitting in. I know we have, you'll talk about that, I'm sure. And then on the CPC, um, you know, Mike Alberto, Danielle, and I are at least planning to um, work on some sort of, the, when the uh, when the strategic plan, the 10-year strategic plan is done to come up with some sort of a executive summary that the town can uh, understand easier than what it's being presented right now. So that'll, that'll take a month or two to get together, I would imagine. But, um, uh, and I think, but MAPC is done like the first week of November, and then, and you may be talking about this later, sorry to talk about well, I do you, Madam Chair, just related to that. So I, I believe that the town planner is working on a summary to be included in the final version of the master plan rather than separate from it um, in maybe more North Reading speak right. <laughs> um, in terms of the, the particular issues because I know there's a lot of uh, um, sort of generic terms that were used in some of the visioning sessions and that was some feedback that we got uh, from, um, from residents. So uh, that, I think that's something that you may see a draft of sooner rather than later. Great. Perfect. Thank you. Mr. A couple of things. Uh, last week I had the pleasure of attending the Economic Development Committee business forum. Uh, we had uh, Mr. O'Leary, Mr. Warren over there as well. We probably had, what, 30, 40 business owners, I would say. It was a really great turnout. Yep. It was a lot of giving them some concepts we had for ideas as far as wastewater, uh, road traffic improvements, infrastructure improvement, zoning changes. But it was more to listen to what they had to say. And we got a lot of good feedback from the business community. We'll keep pressing on that. And today, I'd like to thank the Chamber of Commerce. The, uh, they put on a luncheon at the fire state. It was the police fire luncheon. And on behalf of the business community, we just want to thank fire and police for everything they do and how they help our businesses be safe. And uh, it was a great event and a nice turnout. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to um, also say that it is First Responders Day um, officially, so um, I believe that's why they had the luncheon. I couldn't make it, but um, I do thank our first responders for everything they do, and I'm glad that they're there to do it. Um, and I'd also like to thank everyone who came out to town meeting. It's always a pleasure to have such a big crowd there and have everybody participate. Um, I'd like to see it happen more often. I know there's not always passionate articles, but um, it's nice to see everyone come out and participate in their government. That's it? Good. And I just want to thank my colleagues because after that we got together to work on our strategic plan, which we'll be reviewing briefly this evening, and it'll be available, is available on the town's website. And you, you're tracking changes, Mr. Gilberto, so people can see what's, what's changed, correct? For this, for this evening, I will yeah. review the changes on two slides, yes. and then we'll post the final, final approved version, version on the website right. without the changes noted. It'll be just a clean copy. <laughs> you're not going to leave the track changes online. If folks so. would like. But. 
All right. So um, I can't wait to read it again. So, <laughs> so <laughs> for Mr. Wong, thank you. We'll post You're it the for one. you. You're the, the one. one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now, public comment. Is anybody here for public comment? There are only two of you. All right. All right, so we are moving right along to review and approve our strategic plan for 2021 and beyond. And as we discussed, we had the board recently got together for a public meeting. And as it typically does for this board, lasted for multiple hours as we worked on this we strategic like plan. We do like to talk. So. <laughs> this. <coughs> Excuse me. So, Madam Chair, Mr. Gilberto. thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, unless the board objects, uh, what I was going to do is focus on the progress assessment and then the objective slides and for the, for the general public who are interested, tomorrow the updated draft uh, with all of the changes will be online. But I'm not going to go through the, the um, strength, weakness, opportunity, threat, trend slides. I'll just go through these two because I think they're the most, mo the, the most relevant. Um, with regard to the progress assessment, um, this has expanded uh, over the past few years as we've made more progress on different projects. So what I'm going to note here is just what's in blue, which we've added um, additional improvements to municipal data backup systems, which have occurred uh, to uh, the progress assessment um, slide. And then on the second progress assessment slide, we have a number of other items, including funding the rail trail feasibility study. The battery storage facility, which RMLD constructed at their property within the DPW yard, um, working to improve our public relations and communications through the um, grant writing project coordinator position, which we're looking to fill within the administration office. Our membership in the, a the AARP H Friendly Communities Program, appropriating funding for electronic records retention, which we're going through the procurement process for, obtaining uh, state grant funding for the electronic permitting system, which is up and running here in the town hall, and we'll be rolling out um, uh, more information on that in the coming months. And then the RMLD installation of the LED streetlights, which was completed in 2018 as well. Um, an another uh, great accomplishment for us here in town, working with RMLD. And just continuing right along, and it's very difficult to read from um, this viewpoint, so I apologize, but I'll just call out what was added to the objectives and what was deleted. So what was added is in, is in blue, if you can see the colors, and what was deleted is, is listed as uh, strike through. So we added the permitting design and construction of the water system improvements. Uh, that's been on there, but we changed the timeline to reflect the working timeline that we have right now, which is 2019 through 2021. Then we um, stipulated the change in the wastewater plan, which is more focused on the commercial areas and a timeline through <coughs> 2027. Um, with an update to the timeline for the financing plan to be this year or next. Uh, permitting and approvals uh, to be determined and construction beginning to be determined as well. And then moving along, uh, the time and attendance benefit system, uh, benefit solutions for our employees. We're looking to do that in the 2020-2021 timeline. Um, completing and evaluating the facility's master plan. So that's something that is um, in the custody of the DPW and the facilities master plan committee. I can tell you that they will be meeting on, I believe, November 6th or f is it 5th to evaluate proposals from three firms and hopefully they'll be making a recommendation for award shortly thereafter. Um, we do have the property located at 9 Mill Street that we need to uh, complete the disposal of, so that's been added to make sure that we address that as an objective. Um, there's a modification to leveraging the use of available town-owned land to include conservation for open and passive recreation purposes. Um, the evaluation and the implementation of the community master plan, so that is the town-wide master plan that the Community Planning Commission has been working on for the past uh, 18 months to two years. Um, we'll be really looking at rolling out the implementation of that in 2020. Uh, intersection safety enhancements, I know that that's something that's um, gotten quite a bit of attention in, in recent months and the Department of Public Works has submitted a funding request to advance that along to the Capital Improvement Planning Committee for their consideration um, in uh, this coming um, capital uh, round of funding. Um, in addition for exploring the viability of a dog uh, park for 2020-2021, uh, that was also something that was added here. Um, and then finally, um, including uh, shared services for municipal services. Um, uh, you know, basically, we try to consolidate that to evaluating the alternative delivery 
um, and including shared services as an option, as well as the implementation of the AARP um, age-friendly community. So we've been accepted the program, now it's a matter of implementation. We have that listed for 2020 through 2022. So that is sort of the express summary for those watching at home of what took place over uh, about four hours of discussion at the uh, meeting on October 16th. Um, I know the, the board members put quite, a, put quite a bit of time into reading the plan and commenting and it was very productive and for the benefit of the community. We've summarized it all here. Um, there are additional slides which I'm not going to run through here but they will be posted online when we, assuming the board votes favorably on this. And one of the things I wanted to point out that seems to come up as a pretty active topic of discussion amongst the board members it are the moving target dates of the water and wastewater. So I think what we are, we listed here, the permit design and construct water system improvements relates to the current um, contract of providing potable water from Andover and the improvements required to expand upon that as contemplated in our current 99 year contract. And the second piece of that is the wastewater plan, which is we took out sort of underneath and put a bullet list of all the moving pieces involved in that. And that portion of things would be, it, although it's moving together with, we're focused in on completing those water system improvements for the water delivery right now, but we have not forgotten, and this keeps coming up also with, the, with residents and the commercial uh, property <coughs> owners, we are still on target or working towards those goals with respect to the wastewater solution through the um, Main Street corridor and down through Concord Street. And we still do have two members of the board actively participating in both of those. And we, we did have Mr. Marcieri as our non-board assistant specifically working on those as well because he had a wealth of knowledge with regard to those things. So it looks like we've split these up and you know put a deadline down down stream so to speak, no pun intended, but we are still working towards both of those goals and wanting to assign it a more realistic goal for the for the wastewater portion of things because that seems to be having multiple moving parts that have to be resolved too. So um, does anybody have any comments? Mr. Walner. I, um, just on, this is just a formatting thing to make it easier for people who actually read these documents, <laughs> is if progress assessment could be broken up into older I think it's an easy way to format it. I don't think it doesn't change any of the facts, just the older things that we've done maybe be categorized in one thing, or more recent be categorized in another, mm -hmm. and ongoing being categorized in another. another. So that way it's in three pieces, um, and then you can reorder it from that. It just makes it easier to understand what we're doing as opposed to just being scattered. Sure. And in the same thought, a little bit harder to do on the objectives, we also try to break that into maybe infrastructure, a priority would get a little controversial, so we don't have to do that this year, but just try to break it out into, uh, you know, infrastructure versus whatever categories we can find, just to make it more readable for the, uh, the public to see. And if you need some help in doing that, I'd be happy to volunteer. And Thank you. Do that with you. But you have to keep in mind that Mr. Gilberto likes it to be to one page. One page. page. That's so. fine. That's <laughs> this is what you get. <laughs> That's I his just, objective. I just, well, so I brought anywhere my, we can put a was, line through things makes him page. very happy. I, I brought but my glasses for this purpose to be able to read it. So. <laughs> from, from our strategic planning, I don't think any one of these goals is higher on the priority list than others. I, of course, we all need water, so we, we, right. need, we need to make sure that is in place and we can't live without water, so that, yeah. that would obviously have a, that would be a high, high target priority. But yeah, that's why that We haven't it. assigned these right. uh, one, two, right. three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten value. Yeah. They're, they are all at priority number one for <clears throat> us as a board, but that's really part of why we put them as the objective. <clears throat> try to be realistic every year when we analyze this to figure out how close are we to achieving that goal and yeah. and keeping it on target so yeah
but again, maybe like in the objectives, I agree, that's a whole other issue. But maybe just infrastructure and what falls under infrastructure, if you, if you will, technology, if you will, you know, parks, rec, because you have like the dog and the, the rail trail, they, they could potentially be categorized together, just so that it's easier to see, you know, what we're doing in, in different categories. So if you'd like me to, I'd be happy to come down just to help with the categories and make it non-controversial. He's sweating right now. You can see him sweating. <laughs> oh, I'm only kidding. All right, any other comment? Anybody have any other contributions, comments, questions? No. Nope. Okay. I believe we prepared a motion. Yep. Madam Chair, I move to approve the strategic plan for 2021 and beyond. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Mr. Gilberta, do you have a, a slide for the next? Or we just have that in I our have package? the um, I have the policy to put up on the screen. Okay. It, it is in a PDF. Um, I, I, I really, you know, I, I, we've called it a policy. If, if you've looked at it, and I'm sure the board members have, you see that it's more like a procedure showing a step-by-step -step of how the process would be followed. And what, what we've, what the DPW director and I have tried to do is take comments from some board members, the board's discussion, the existing assessment bylaw, which I provided a copy of, it's chapter 25 of our general bylaws, and our best recommendation, and try to assemble all of that together into effectively what is a procedure. And so going through this, you know, what we've, we've treated this, the, the law recognizes two types of, seat, of streets, accepted streets which have been accepted by town meeting and for which the town owns the fee, um, and that's, you know, we just had a little metal way come up here, you signed off on uh, or something that will be recorded at the registry of deeds and the town owns the land that the street is located on. And then private or unaccepted streets, which the town does not own the fee in. But in reality, what ends up happening in the field is we have three categories of streets. We have accepted streets, which I described, unaccepted streets, which we maintain because we plow them. There is a layout on, the, on these streets. If you look on a plan, you see that there is um, a shared, uh, there are boundaries of specific parcels and a shared access way. Um, and there's a number of those in towns. I think, I think it's over four miles worth of, of that road that we're talking about. And then we have this third category of these roads that are, there is no layout. And we've talked extensively about the Swan Pond Road situation. Traveled Way is another one that comes to mind along the, uh, the east side of Martins Pond. It's another great example of a, a road that's in that sort of private street in that there is no layout for it. But the town does maintain it, meaning that we send trash trucks through it, um, we plow it. So I kind of put that as a premise in the whole thing and where this came from. Um, and we tried to build off of those three factors and, and to give the board really a starting point for what would be a board discussion. I can walk through kind of how we envisioned it sure. if you wanted. I mean, I don't want to go, to, I don't want to talk longer than folks want, um, but. Um, you know, what we've done here is tried to take the existing Chapter 25 standard that it applies to street sidewalks and storm drains and to apply it to these parcels uh, that we're talking about here, meaning using the Swan Pond Road example. And, and I'm, I divided them up this way because under the town's bylaw, if there was in fact a layout, there's already a prescribed process for street acceptance where the town does take the fee in the road and it does get accepted by town meeting. And then we go and make the improvements and we can even bond those improvements over uh, you know uh, multiple years for uh, a payback through assessment but as i've said before we can't do that for the private ways for which there isn't a layout thank you um so you know taking that um we, we looked and used the 50 percent standard which our, our bylaw under chapter 25 for assessment states that the town shall provide 50 percent uh, there isn't an option for us to provide less than that um here um and what i added to it was that we would not pay an assessment based on abutting town owned land and that that reflects the conversation that the board had on september 30th where we were looking to go 50-50, so to speak, with the residents, but not pay anything more for the par portions of land that are town-owned. 
Um, this is where it gets a little, I, I think, more complicated. Um, you know, here, we've said that for a project to be considered, there would be a letter signed by the owners of all the properties abutting or directly impacted by the proposed project to be submitted to the DBW. So what happened is we received a warrant article that was signed by um, multiple residents two years ago. It was a citizen's petition that went on the town meeting warrant. Um, I couldn't say whether or not that article had all of the abutting property owners, but I believe that it did. What it didn't include was a release for us to be able to go on the property and make the specific improvements. It simply supported funding to do the improvements. So we've tried to advance that further, that these projects would be coming with all of the property owners um, in agreement and in support of the proposed project. I don't know that that's going to be acceptable to the majority of the board based upon the conversation, but I want to point that out, that that's what we've put in here. And the reason it doesn't say what the... If I were to compare it to the general bylaw for regular street acceptance, it would say that 50% or more sign off on it. But we all know for these projects with only 50% signing off, you're not really going to have a successful project unless you do a very, it's a very small area. So the board may wish to consider finding some sort of a middle ground to advance the process, so to speak. What I try to do is you know, reflect what happened here. Uh, there are projects where we can come up with a cost estimate on our own very easily. And then there are projects where we need outside assistance. So I put that to the DPW director to identify whether those uh, resources are needed and that uh, the director would submit a request for funding for the resources, either through the regular capital process or through the non-capital process, a small capital process of the budget um, to be submitted to me, to be forwarded to you for consideration as an operating budget request. So that's intended to kind of lay out that process um, here. And I think that was a source of frustration for the, some of the residents on Swamp Pond Road in that they were not afforded. Um, when, when they came forward and we said, we can't really even give you a reasonable estimate without getting resources identified or identifying additional resources to help us with the, the, the um, engineering work, you know, that was a step that didn't exist previously because the projects have, weren't necessarily as complicated as this project has been. So I've tried to reflect that here. Um, so that it would be only after that reasonable cost estimate is available that we would move to a hearing with the residents where we would invite them to come forward um, to be provided the cost and afforded the opportunity to ask questions about the proposed project. And again, borrowing from Chapter 25, the existing bylaw, we would have a public hearing where there would be a not to exceed number provided. Um, and that's the exact language that's provided in the, um, um, in the, in the bylaw from my understanding. Um, with the, in a, in a, an assessment of what it would be per property parcel. So normally for these assessments, or, or I should say often for these assessments, they are done on a per linear foot basis, but we saw how complicated that can become when you don't have a layout or when the town has town owned land involved. So we, we, we put it as the, the board identified in its September 30th discussion to have it be per property parcel. Um, and I think there's also language in there that basically says that there could be um, a lump sum payment rather than individual property owners. Um, and it could, it could be agreed upon within the residence. So I, I think from a standpoint, if there's going to be a 50-50 cost share and to use the Swan Pond Road example, the, half of it is $175,000 for the town and half is for the residents. We're not necessarily concerned who's coming up with the funding, but we will want to make sure we have the total amount secured, wherever it may come from, to match the town's portion so we can enter into a contract. <coughs> so this tries to allow the flexibility for us to do that here. Um, so once... Um, once we've then obtained the releases from all of the property owners to be impacted um, by the project, we would then have a, uh, the project being put on a list uh, uh, for construction as funds would become available. So I would envision this being there would be, there would need to be in all likelihood a capital project request submitted to the Capital Improvement Planning Committee for an unaccepted road to be approved because I'm assuming that the project would in most cases exceed $25,000. Um, the release, we've talked with town council about what this would be, what would be involved with this, and it would really be, unfortunately, if we didn't want to go down the road of the surveying and delineating the, where the property would end and where we want the road to be laid out, which from the feedback we got both from the residents and from the board, we didn't want to do, it would be a more general release, meaning that it might say that, that they're agreeing for us to put the road in you know, a, a wide swath of land, wider than we ever intend to use, but we may need to because we don't know what we're going to find when we're in the field. So this is intended to really identify that. 
if we wanted to really get into a much more specific layout, then you might we might find ourselves in a situation of having to do some more engineering work than we necessarily want to do on these projects. Um, there's a directive in here, you know, next that the DPW would request the funding for the, the project um, uh, in line with the cycle for capital funding. So that, that just to kind of spell out for the town, hey, here's how the window of, here's how the, the coordination of the schedule will work. They need to submit generally by October 15th in order for it to be considered for the next fiscal year. And again, I'm trying to meld our existing capital process into this whole process to make it to make it work. And then the project would be scheduled upon um, um, the um, approval of town meeting. You know, no different than any other capital improvement project would be, would occur. The final assessment would be the lower of either the actual per parcel cost based on 50 percent of the total construction cost divided by the number of parcels or the estimated <coughs> assessment quoted at the public hearing. Again, that's language, that, that's a, an intent taken directly from the existing uh, betterment bylaw, chapter 25, for um, street acceptance. So we just are, are taking exactly from that. The town um, uh, would not advance the projects until the residence portion of funds has been collected and deposited in the appropriate town gift account. Um, this does establish at the recommendation of some members uh, that there be a, a timeline um, from the town meeting vote in order that to, for the receipt of funds. And in this case, we have it at 90 days. Um, the board may wish to discuss whether it wants to have a window and what that appropriate window would be. Um, if all funding was not submitted, then um, the roadway improvement project would be canceled and the town's appropriation would be returned to the general fund. Again, that's something the board will have to determine. Uh, temporary or permanent construction or utility access easements would have to also be granted. Um, you know, I envision it probably being a single release that's very broad um, uh, in terms of what our, uh, what our ability to access the property would be, um, you know, absent us getting into some engineering design and putting on a plan exactly what, what we're looking for. The procurement process, I mean, these projects mostly work by a combination of town personnel um, going in and doing the, the preparation work um, along the route to be paved, maybe even laying down the gravel base or improving the gravel base. And then we have existing contracts that we generally draw upon for paving that we would presumably be drawing upon. But it is possible that we might deter determine that we want to bid out a project separately because of the complexity or because we don't believe the uh, town's um, annual contract you know, has the capacity to, to allow it, a annual contract the town's contractor for annual paving may not have the capacity for it. But um, generally, we, we work off of a regional contract that we procure with Middleton and with uh, Linfield jointly. And here we have it that the responsibility to repair and maintain the project site would revert back to the abutters. You know, I don't know what the board's intention is with regard to that. I'm, I'm merely trying to, to you know, represent here who actually owns the property. We do not own the property at that point in time. It still would be privately owned. The board may wish to consider that that not be a condition and that the board wants to take on the responsibility for, um, for maintenance. We already know that for the stormwater, it's highly likely that the State Department of Environmental Protection is going to require the town to be a stakeholder in the maintenance of that system. Um, it would not surprise us one bit for them to say that that be the case and that it be memorialized in a permit for that matter. Um, but we would also re reserve the right to maintain the roadway. Uh, for public safety, which is the minimum standard that we have the authority under state law for at this point in time. And then finally, upon completion of the project, the public shall retain the right of easement to use the roadway indefinitely. So, you know, we don't, it's unclear whether we technically have the right, you know, the town has the right to pass and repass over a road such as um, Swan Pond <coughs> Road. And, and a great example of it is uh, Traveled Way, where we had um, uh, one individual tried to identify that the road was a private way and res restrict the public's access. And the problem with that for us is, well, we're sending a trash truck and a, and a plow down that road. For us to say that it's now a private way really contradicts our ability to do that. And of course, you know, through some conversation with the neighbors, it really wasn't the intention to, to restrict the access. We go down Swamp Pond Road right now because we're basically invited by the property owners to maintain the road. They allow us to. They each have easements over each other's property. This would really memorialize that we would, in fact, have the ability to, to get there. And the legal mechanism to do that, I'd, I'd leave to the attorneys to, to determine, but that would be the spirit of it. So we've tried, you see, we've tried to kind of combine all of this into something that's a starting point for a discussion. It's really here as a procedure. You know, I, I do think that 
in a perfect world, it would be a it would be written as a bylaw, uh, but it's not clear to me that we would be able to get attorney general appro approval for a bylaw of this nature without special legislation. So, in, in response to the discussion at town meeting, we've developed it as a policy for the board to consider, and hopefully, it's a good starting point. But constructive feedback is welcome. And if it's okay, Madam Chair, I'm going to step to my seat. Sure. Questions, Mr. Schultz. I think it, thank you very much for you and your team put this together. My only, uh, uh, not a criticism, but um, change I would recommend is I would give them six months to get the money versus 90 days. I think that might be a little bit tight. But I think, sure. I think the, uh, it, it, what you have here is basically what I envisioned roughly as a policy. Um, I just think 90 days, like look at Swamp Ponders, I don't know how many residents there, it was about mm -hmm. I think close to 20 if I remember right. I think it's a lot to have them get that together in 90 days. That's all. I think six months might be a better uh, time frame. That's all. But I think otherwise, I think the policy reads great. Any other questions or comments? I, I should add just a couple of things. I'm sorry for not saying them earlier, but I did talk with a town planner, and she, you know, she did think that it, the planning commission might welcome the opportunity to provide some some insight. You know, I did express to her that this doesn't really include any construction standards per se it's more you know procedural um, but I, I know that at least one planning commission member stood up and I believe was in favor of the project and thought we should try to address it so we may wish to consider their feedback and I also provided for the board members a copy of an email that I received from um, Don Kelleher who was the chair of the capital improvement planning committee along with my responses as, as well to try to address where this template came from but I, I do have your comment thank you yeah. Mr. Waller um, I I don't know what the original policy was, so it's a little hard to comment. There is a one. There was one. There was this is the original. We're, we're <laughs> this, creating this is the start. This is 1.0. Yeah. No, I thought that you always had a policy for you're disintegrating in Swan Pond. Am I not hearing that right? So, okay. so what, always what, had a procedure for everything else, but we, we did, Pond. and it's that Chapter 25 um, bylaw, which is in the oh, packet behind us. Oh, so this is just specifically for Swan Pond. For private. Th Pond. This would be I for for okay. the acceptance okay. of roads that for which there is not a layout at this point okay. in time. Okay. Swan Pond being one, Traveled Way being, a, being another, and there may be a handful of others. So the betterments bylaw is formulated based on the statute, and the betterments bylaw allows for the improvement with the buy-in of the abutting residents. And in the end, though, the street gets accepted by the city. So we take it over after that. Okay. In this case, we had no policy in place because we aren't in the business of paving right. private ways other than for access, you know, and <coughs> public safety vehicles. So we had to kind of think about what might be appropriate for this. I guess this is prompted because of that, because of Swan Pond, but this is going to apply to any potential, any potential uh, private way that, you know, that comes under the definition here. Any other comment? Mr. O'Leary. Uh, a few comments. Uh, first of all, again, I applaud the administration's efforts for getting on this quickly, <coughs> you know, and uh, putting something in front of us to, to start to work with. Um, so I broke it down by bullets, I guess. Uh, so on bullet three, let's see. Yeah. But overall, I think, that, I think the board needs to maintain some sort of discretion, depending upon the set of circumstances and the uniqueness of, of the projects. You know, Swan Pond is a, is, a, is a huge undertaking and they're very unique in, as far as you know, where it's situated uh, and uh, the nuances that come along with it. And I assume there'll be some other similar situations with other um, projects that if they're come forward uh, by the residents for us to consider. So, you know, like in three, you know, should be discussed based upon, um, you know, for, this is as far as, you know, the North Reading, uh, based upon the availability of the funds, the town meeting shall provide 50% of the necessary funds for projects. The town shall not pay any assessment based on abutting town-owned land. To me, that depends. Depends on where it is, you know, it depends on how much it is. I mean, up in, in Swan Pond, this is a significant portion that the town has frontage, but it's a significant project also. And the, the commitment that the town would be making would be huge. On a smaller street, 
then we may have some parcels which have frontage, and we may want to assist in, in sharing that in addition to the 50%. So I think the town, the board needs flexibility, depending upon the, the, the specifics. And, and again, I'm not sure, I guess I'd have to see the list of those ways which are, which are private. So, I, so again, I just think the board needs to allow for some flexibility and discretion based upon individual projects. The next bullet four, um, in order for the project to be considered a letter signed by the owners of all properties abutting or directly impacting, um, that's, that's contrary to the betterment bylaw, which is the majority of residents, uh, and it may be in the public interest, you know, if the majority of people on, a, on this private way wants to do it, you know, as is the case in, um, in the Swan Pond situation, you know, you've got everybody, you know, 24 property owners and one person's holding out. Um, and what we're saying here is, you know, they maybe it's basically with a veto authority on the, over the whole thing. But again, it might not be in the public interest. And again, if the other people are willing to <coughs> pick up the tab, you know, let's consider it. Allow some sort of um, opportunity for the for the town to, 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 to do that, or the board to do it. Um, and bullet number six, which is, starts with, in the opinion of the DPW director, uh, in relation to um, submitting it to the Capital Improvement Planning Committee, uh, we need to be able to uh, respond to citizens' petitions. Um, uh, betterments are not necessarily handled in the same process right now. In other words, we, we have a, a listing of, of streets that are subject and ready for improvement. But if someone on a pri on a uh, on an unaccepted street, if residents come forward, you know, I would anticipate that this board would be receptive to entertaining you know, the 50-50 share, uh, and, and depending on the timing, does it go to Capital Approval Planning Committee or not, you know? But again, the board needs to uh, have the flexibility to exercise some uh, discretion. And again, it's all gonna be subject to town meeting approval unless it's under $25,000. See, one question on that, on that I don't think this can go before capital, can it, Michael, because it's private owned land? I'm sorry? This can't no, go no, before I'm, CIPC, I'm talking can currently, it? like if we have, even right now, you know, an, an, an unaccepted street, Yeah. you know, I'm not so sure that it would go before the Capital Improvement Planning Committee and be put off for several years because it didn't fit into our existing No, but wasn't schedule. there a reason, Michael, that this, did these kind of projects can't go through CIPC? So these type of projects can't be borrowed for. That's okay. That, that's that's a restriction. Yeah. So Plus, it's got to be cash. Let's All right. just, let's just, just let so, so to me, yeah. you know, uh, I, I think, think being gone. this restrictive, and again, we, we, can, we can put in here that, you know, Ideally, we would like to see it go through this. This is the process we would like to see it follow, but we need to allow some sort of discretion for whoever's sitting on this board to exercise that discretion if it's in the public interest or if it's an opportunity that we want to avail ourselves of where the residents are ready to move forward. You know, we should strike while the iron's hot. At least have the opportunity to do that. So we need to be able to uh, react to the individual opportunities. Uh, number eight, again, it says in the middle of the paragraph, which is the bottom one on the first page, after the line after not to exceed upon a vote of the majority of the property owners residing in the private street and representing the majority of the road frontage, that's contradictory to what we're saying in number four, which says that all owners, you know, you know so it's kind of contradictory. And, and again, I, to me, majority is better than, you know, 100%. So we need to just get that... Uh, clarified, and again, that's also contrary, if we're gonna try and mirror as much as we can uh, the betterment bylaw, again, it's not, it's a majority, it's not 100% of the owners. So we have to be careful that that doesn't happen. And the second, okay. So I think that's an error. I think it's supposed to say all, not yeah. rather than a majority. It, it, I it think would these have to are be. two, no, these are two separate, I know these are two separate bullets. The first bullet has to be that the full uh, owners are in agreement with it. The second bullet has to do the the number eight bullet has to do with if Money. there's a if there's a decision amongst the majority of the members that you know just like with Swan Pond, you know, seven uh, what what do we say? Sixteen of the parcel <coughs> of the twenty parcel owners are in agreement that they'll be contributing toward the fifty percent share, and they decide that amongst themselves we could entertain that just like we've That's done in Swan Pond. But Swan Pond was the, the buy-in of this board based on the contingency that every single parcel owner on <coughs> Swan Pond will be saying yes and agreeing in writing 
that we're going to be allowed to, to pave this road. Just with so the authority to go on their land. Exactly. That's right. Yeah. So the first bullet has to do with the permissions, not necessarily the payment, but the permissions to do it. And the second, that number eight bullet that, that you're talking about has to do with, if they come up with another, maybe there's one benefactor on the road that'll pay for the whole thing on right. behalf of them. That's up to the residents uh, to decide. So it gives them the options of, is everyone going to be contributing? Are 16 out of the 20 going to be contributing? Or if they come up with their own solution as to how they're going to contribute their 50% share, that's where I think we should just let them have the right. leeway to, to determine and make their own agreement and then present it to the board and or present it to the DPW in a written agreement amongst them so that there's something to rely on that says what their decision is. That just, uh, you know, exactly just notes that I had made when I went through this. Again, the first bullet on the second page, um, you know, once all property owners have signed releases, and again, the assumption here is, is that all property owners are going to be on board. Um, we may determine, meaning the board may determine, that we're okay with some people opting out, whether it be in the middle or whether it be at the end. You know, so why would we restrict ourselves? Because of the liability. We can't do work in somebody's house doesn't give support. No, no, I'm not, I'm not yeah. saying do the work other than we what we're already doing. As far as, I mean, every road pay. that we're talking about here, we're already maintaining it. Let's we're, just let, please let Mr. Yeah. O'Leary talk. I'm just, talk. this is just notes Everyone's that Everyone's going to have a chance. Yeah, I just to, went through it quickly. Yeah. And, and, and again, so I'm, please, I'm, I know we're going to have lots of opportunities to, to, sure. to kick it around here. But please finish your point, and, and then we can all make comments and things like that but you were talking about no, the, so first, just saying, the first, first bullet. bullet you know once all property owners have signed releases I, I mean again depending upon the circumstances depending upon the individual project we may not need all of the property release over you know so again allow the board the flexibility to react to specific projects um, I'll pass on okay and again I'm all in favor of identifying the town and all of that so but again this would appear as though a uh, failure of any parcel owner to execute a written agreement shall result in no request for funding for construction. Again, one parcel owner would have veto authority. That's of concern because it may be in everybody's interest to move forward. So we need the flexibility to do that. Um, and again, DPW, DPW shall request funding for construction of the project and the next cycle of capital improvement project typically do under, again, we need the flexibility depending upon the timing, depending upon, we're talking about the, uh, uh, the which is bullet number I consider 12, one, two, three, fourth one down, the 90 days. And I agree with Mr. Schultz, you know, that may be a little bit short. And again, six months may be short, depending upon the, the construction cycle. And uh, even in the Swan Pond case, I mean, the, the soonest we could get anything done would be probably over a year from now. So, I mean, you know, for people to come up with that money six months before it's needed, before we even have to go out and, and contract with anybody, we, we we, the board, should have the flexibility to work it within the time constraints necessary to ensure that the town isn't putting out money up front without their commitment also. But there may be more than 90 days, maybe, you know, maybe less. So, so again, I think we need the flexibility on the timing. You know, leave it up to do, the board to uh, make it work. And other than that, that's all I have at this point. But again, I appreciate the effort that was Put into putting it forward so that we can start to discuss this on a timely basis and um, I look forward to, and again I think input from the, the CPC, input from the public, input uh, specifically from SWAT Pond residents at this particular point in time would be helpful just to see what their reaction is as to how it may or may not work um, and what their thought process is and again their thought process is a little bit different than ours uh, in some instances but that's okay. I think what we're looking to do is have a, a policy in place which allows the board uh, some discretion and flexibility uh, to accomplish uh, what everybody thinks is in everybody's best interest. So, good start. Uh, other members? Yeah, the only thing I would be, I would personally be a sick I think everybody has to give authorization to the town. I'm not comfortable with the town just going on private property and uh, they don't have to pay all pay for it. They can divvy up the payment as, as, as any way they want. But I think we should have kind of a hard and fast policy here only because I don't think it's really great at times to have the board have flexibility that that could be abused. I think it's if you have a hard policy, we everybody knows the rules. If you want this done, this is what you have to do. 
I think that's, I think government should be consistent. So I, I, the flexibility part, I think, scares me a little. And it just, everybody needs to buy in from a liability standpoint. We can't be, and I'm not in favor of paving one part of a road, taking a break, paving another part. I mean, I, I don't know if we're going to talk about, I think having it in there that everyone's going to sign off on it is going to avoid us paving parts of roads. That's why I think it should stay in there. I just have a couple of comments too about it. I, <laughs> which I, I think it's great. It incorporated a lot of the kind of considerations that were milling around. But I also, I too think that, um, with respect to towns abutting parcels, I think this is so specific to the private ways and the private ways being do not appear on a plan, have not been accepted. It's so distinct from the unaccepted, appears on a plan but hasn't been accepted yet and falls under the betterments. It's, it's so different and distinct. And the Swan Pond, I think, is a good example because of all of the contingencies involved with that. So I think it does need to be, like Mr. Schultz is saying, more, more, more specific. And, and if that makes it a higher standard to getting it done, then so be it. And there's a reason for that. But the, I think that we should not, and know, Mr. O'Leary, you think that in, it gives us, we should have the discretion if we have a budding town parcels. But in a lot of these circumstances from our review of this, we're already expending public funds to sort of maintain or put some, some gravel down and you know, collect the trash and plow the streets and things like that. So we're already, we've already invested to the degree that we think is appropriate, in, including on some of these that are, so we already have a financial obligation that we're committed to, and that's with or without regard to whether we own the parcel. So I don't think if this comes to us that the town should be expending any portion of that 50% since the town's already come up, coming up with the other 50% to, to pave this private way that isn't even gonna be an accepted public way in the end. And the second thing um, that, you know, we talked, that we, you mentioned was in number four, um, the, or the fourth bullet, I think, one, two, three, fourth one down. I do think, and I agree with Mr. Schultz, every owner, whether or not they're going to contribute to the 50% portion, for this particular circumstance, for a private way, I do think every single owner should be saying yes to it so we avoid any kind of, you know, taking or trespass or any kind of very conceivable claims that could be made in this, this town has had, you know, history of things of, uh, in the past similar to that where every procedural step was taken. What the town thinks is correct, but it doesn't end up being correct or we end up having a, dip paying a little bit more of a penalty on what was done. So I think we do need the letter signed by each and every owner saying, yes, you're allowed to do this. Yes, I understand the plan. Yes, I know you're going to come across, especially Swan Pond Road, which goes all in and out and all over, all over private parcels, you know, yes, it's okay. And like I said, I think in Swan Pond, that was a contingency that, that got this board's unanimous vote. Every single one, whether they wanted it or not, had to right. buy into it. So it's well, totally- Whether they wanted to pay for it or not. Right, I think it's right. so completely different than the betterments because the betterments, as again, it references a, a street laid out on a plan. So everybody knows and that's the way the street is and everybody has access and the plan depicts that. This is totally different where we, where using Swan Pond as an example, the street literally goes across people's front parcels and things like that. So I do think in this scenario, we need everybody's yes to it, whether or not they're gonna contribute. And um, I think that that is a high standard, but it's also utilizing <coughs> city funds to pave a private way that the owners purchase with that private way in the manner that it, that it is. Um, the other thing that I think is an issue here is the, the last bullet, I think it's number eight. I think <coughs> going along, I think it's number eight. One, two, three. Yeah, it's number eight on the first page. 
I don't think we should be saying that it should be, here we give them the not to exceed assessment cost, but where timelines are moving targets here and it could be 90 days or six months or this season or that season, we give the, we should be giving the estimate, but then in the f bullet of, upon approval of funding, no matter what the ultimate cost is, especially with construction costs varying here, here, there, and everywhere, which we are familiar with, we should be saying in that bullet on the second page on approval of funding, it's the cost. Here's the final cost to it, and 50% of that should be, that should, the, the, the estimate should be what's the amount gift to paid into the gift, and whatever the result is, whether that's higher or lower, like we were talking about with Swan Pond, that's the 50%, whatever that value is, should be paid. And if it's $100,000 higher than what was anticipated at the estimate provided at the DPW hearing, then that's going to be the remainder that's owed. And there should be some agreement that that's what it's going to cost. In other words, we shouldn't bear the, co the additional cost of that, and we shouldn't be tied into what's the lower of the two. It should be, here's the cost, we're paying 50%, you're paying 50%. That's just my opinion, but I don't think we should have this language that, oh, we'll give you the lower of what it finally costs or what the e estimate is that we provided. That's really not the purpose of this, and I don't. I think that should be modified. Okay, I think what that was was, I think as we did the Swan Pond situation, it was a worst case scenario with huge contingencies, and they come up with, in this case, $175,000. We don't anticipate that that all would be spent. So right. there would be returns of funds. The whole idea was that for the town to get up front more than what was anticipated, reasonably anticipated, to cover any contingencies, and there would be a refund. Right. right? So, I mean, it's, right. it's not like, it, yeah, we don't want to be in a situation where we want to give them a people. cap, though. You know, we, we don't want to, you know, we'll put up 175, yeah. they're putting up 100. We want to give them a cap, though. Well, we're going to give them a yeah. cap at 175, which is going to be. In, I would assume even future boards and future administrations are going to take a very conservative approach so that nobody gets stuck one way or the other, a surprise at the end. Right. And then, you know, hopefully there's a refund. The town expends less and the residents would have expended less and they get refunded the money. Right. So. But, li but on the flip side of that, if there's an additional amount that comes into the design, the improvement or the construction cost, the town shouldn't be required to pay that it should be 50 50 shared so yeah. if it's more money i agree that that if there's a we don't the we don't the mo town isn't going to receive some sort of a profit from right. this no, no. Gift, I, I think the original estimate was a three hundred and nine thousand dollars three hundred nine thousand yeah. dollars yeah. and, and, standard and contingency. We, we upped it to three hundred and fifty <laughs> right. in that three hundred and nine was it was a significant contingency yes so yeah. we put an additional forty thousand right. dollar contingency on it so if there was something unforeseen, nobody right, would get and surprised, I, and then we would refund yeah. it. I've said it multiple times. I'm, I think that's a pretty low estimate, but I'm not the person that came up with the estimate. Okay. Um, actually, it's for more for Michael. Um, we kind of, I threw out the idea of giving them six months or whatever. The, Steve said maybe a little bit more. I, thinking about that now a little bit further, my question is. We're getting these price quotes for these projects, and we're giving them a cap. We're saying you, residents, you're paying no greater than X, whatever that is, so they have a, a ceiling. But if, this gets, if these things get delayed a couple of years to get approved, are we building into inflation in our construction costs? We're, we're put it this way: if we're getting a quote now in 2019 for projects going to be done in construction year 2021, hmm. you know that's why I don't know how we address that issue. So I, I would think I wouldn't go more than six months. I'm, yeah. I'm, yeah, and I'm not that. sure, but I want to give them enough time to pull their resources together too yeah but that that provision just it pr that provision is just for the residents who want this to put the money in to get the get it going within the 90 no, no i'm thinking about the town's exposure not the residents they're capped so they're, they're not going but if we if we drag this project out two years now the project that was 350 is now 400 mm -hmm. Just because of inflation, mm -hmm. we're on the hook for the extra 50, not That's the That's why I think the previous provision of the lesser of. But I think we need to give them a cap, though. I think no, I, to the back no, of the I think you need an estimate, just like everything else. Just like you No, no, you we have, have an, an estimate, estimate, but the estimate might be two years old by the time we actually put a shovel on the ground. That's what I'm saying. 
So if it costs more, that's why I think we should eliminate be, eliminate the provisions that says the lesser of the I think two. We, had, we have to get the residents a cap, though, like the Betterment statute. I, I think tying it to yeah. the town meeting vote is part of the problem here. Again, we voted a town meeting $350,000. But this wouldn't go out to bid probably for at least probably six months because, you know, it was October town <coughs> meeting. It's not going to happen until next they summer. Get the money. Next summer at the no earlier. So yeah. you're going to go out to bid in the spring mm -hmm. to find out what it is. Well, they're going to get the money first before we can go out to bid. But, yeah. but you're going to have to. But it, but as far as the timing of it, it, depends on when the town meeting takes place. So that's yeah. why tying it to the town meeting 90 days from town meeting vote doesn't necessarily work. Doesn't necessarily work just well, because of. Would these be approved at town meeting or approved by the select board in the sense yeah. that? We town still get appropriate, yeah. It would be a case by, I would assume, a case by case right. basis. We take yeah. it to town meeting, either a separate, probably a separate warrant article or under the capital plan, one or the other, which is due. So a lot of these you are know, so, so you bid it, and just, so you, you approve it. If you do it on the capital improvement plan, right, that's June town meeting. Yeah. yeah. That may not be bid until the following spring. Right. So a lot of these are going to fall on basically happenstance when the calendar, when the request comes in. When what? It, a lot of this stuff, the timeline is going to really be determined on. Happenstance on the monthly request from the residents come in, right? Because it's going to be whatever right. the next which meeting is, why, is. Which is part of what yeah. I said. We need some flexibility here as far as the timing and how it works. Or tying but it into um, a specific, you know, that that the gift has to be paid in by July first well, or. Well, I, that's why I don't think it needs yeah. to be spelled out here. I think yeah. the, at the board's discretion, depending upon what the administration says, you know, we're ready to go out to bid, so we need the money. You know, I mean, people got to be put on notice. Because first of all, they petitioned us. You know, we're not initiating anything right. here. So they petitioned us. We've got a town meeting, and we've got an approval basically to so they to get prepared. to get the money. And then we're gonna, you know, and we've done a lot of preliminary <coughs> work already. Um, and then you got to go out to bid whether it's going to be next spring, if it's a June town meeting, or you got to try and get it in in October. You know, it depends. How, how did we get the estimate on Swamp Pond? Was that internal or was that? No, we had we had a ten thousand dollar appropriation to get a uh, initial survey and engineering. Okay, done. That, that's that's right. I remember that now. So that's another issue. Is how do we? I'm just thinking like Steve saying the logistics and the timing of all this. Say ABC Street residents come to us and they want their street done under this program. We got to. How do we raise the money to even get the? It's an earlier step in the procedure, if you look back on the first page, yeah, where the that. DPW director either does it in-house or makes a request for funding either through small or large capital in order to get the estimate done. So, so I mean, this is a multiple-year so, so process in any so scenario. So if the board's looking I mean, to buy into the program, we're going to go get the $10,000, do the study, say, okay, residents, it's going to be $350,000, and then we're going to go to town meeting. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and does that 10000 get thrown into the three fifty? Mm -hmm. Is it now three sixty? Necessarily. Uh, under this, it does. It should, right? Because that's part yeah, of the design. It, it, so it, it it wasn't proposed in that fashion here, and that's not how it was handled with Swamp Pond Road. We didn't include that ten thousand in the three fifty. No, but I think in the future all costs should be fifty fifty. I mean, it's yeah. So we would have to adjust this to yeah. include previously incurred costs. Then. Well, but that's no, but no, you costs. you do have that though. Design, permit, and construct. Yeah. Wouldn't that be part of the design, what, the, what I, we did? I'm only indicating we, that's not how we handled it with the right. Swan Pond project. If we want to change that to cover, to include all costs, we could do that. But Swan Pond was the catalyst to this. Right. So mm -hmm. this is to, uh, this, right. it's not going to come to us like that anymore if we have this policy in place that allows people policy. to do this. And maybe most likely we won't see a lot of these either. But, but I, I also think, I do think we need to have some definitive payment in to show that, you know, this is what we want and here's our portion and moving it forward. I do think that has to have a timeline. I don't think it should be just left to, you know, if we're putting a process in place, we should pinpoint some point in that process where it makes the most sense. I just think that depending upon the project, some are easier than others. Um, the board can determine, okay, if we want to partner with you, you know, you've got three months to come up with the, with the money, you know, or you've got six months to come up with it, or you've got nine months, depending upon what the administration tells us. So the board, well, never, so the board is going to determine, the board determine, is going to determine what timelines are going to be, and you know, how we're going to go get the appropriations, how we're going to go get the money, and when do we need their money. But it would be after town meetings. They never would, they wouldn't go get the money until town meeting approved right. project. But they, but 
hopefully when you go to town meeting, which isn't the case with Swan Pond at this particular point in time, you would know what the mm -hmm. timeline is. Mm -hmm. You know, my, my anticipated hope <laughs> would be that when someone comes forward with a project of this magnitude, and, we're gonna, and the board's gonna buy into the idea, we'll know what construction season is gonna happen if town meeting approves it, you know? Because I can foresee the capital improvement committee saying no yes. to all of these projects yeah. and putting it in the queue with everything else. Right. But the board may determine that it's in the public's interest. Special appropriation. Just to go in and go yeah. get it done, you know, outside of the normal operating, because this is outside of the norm. But I think we're reacting to, whether it's to 90 residents' days, requests. Whether it's 90 days or 180 days, it would be after town meeting. So I think that part's accurate. That's what would trigger them getting the funding into us. Although it wouldn't work in this particular case. Mm. What do you mean? Because it's October. It's not going to happen in 90 days. It's not construction. No, but they can still get the money in. They can still get the money Yeah, well, yeah we, but why would we, we want them to tie up their money for, for because we a year want, or 18 months? Because we want to make sure people are serious about right. doing this project. I know they're serious about it, but, you know, it's a lot of money. If Our money's 10, being 12, tied I'm up I'm just saying, if it's ten dollars or $12,000 per person who's going to kick in here yeah. in the Swan Pond case, and you're going to tie up their money and nothing's going to happen for two years. Our town's money's being tied up in the same amount of time. But it's, it's different. No, it's a I cash mean, flow. It's not, it's not a household. You know, it's not a household that's being disrupted. Yeah, to town, the, the, we should put in a held in a non-interest bearing escrow account. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it's I, I, yeah, that's a good point. You know, so we, we, we just, you know, again, they've come to us and they're willing to disrupt the cash flow in their household in order to get something improved in their, their neighborhood, in their street. But if it's going to take us two years to do it, why do we need to tie up their money for two years? You know, other than again, we can phase it in. 50% at this point and then, but it should be at the discretion of the board depending upon how the project is going I think the out. whole idea, Steve, that. why it's good to do it up front is because houses can get sold, property can change hands mm -hmm. in those two years. What if the new people, so we want to have it locked in before we start wasting resources okay. and time on the project. So if it means we're holding the money for two years, that's an occupational hazard with this project. What if you get two new owners and they don't want to do it? Yep. And then so now you got the, you know, so I think it should be something in here in the sense that the time for residents approval and authorizations we can't have a situation i'm talking in riddles here we can't have a situation where yeah we get all the money in we get all the approvals in and then before we put a shovel in the ground this property is sold and this new owner he or she doesn't want it and they were, so how do we tie that loop up uh, it might i don't know if i'm making any sense here but a, no, like a new owner comes in before the shovel hits the ground. You're an, How attorney, do we you're an attorney who handles residential oh. you know, transfers, so it becomes an encumbrance on the property. Well, that's why we have to lock everything in at a time, sir. But you will lock it in with you, lock it in dollars and cents and lock it in you know, so that the trade changes hands. Well, I don't you know, think the closing, the money gets put up in escrow for the I, next owner. I don't think we're the recording something on every property the registry needs. Another interesting. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm just saying. You know what I'm saying, Kate? Like, we should put in yeah. that until the payments made, there'll be a lien recorded against yeah. each parcel. I'm only kidding. I don't All know right. that we can. Go yeah. ahead, Mr. I Mrs. Mrs. Gonzalez. <laughs> I know you're saying you're kidding, but I to am. a point. No, I guess. To a point, though, I thought that we all agreed that that money had to come up before we would do anything. Before we go out to bid. Before we go out yeah. to bid. So take take Swan Pond out of the mix here. Let's right. just, just take Swan Pond out. Uh, we're thinking of it in that <coughs> context because we did everything the reverse of what this policy would call. So take that out. All right. just take take a you know potential new private way coming forward under this policy, right? Mm -hmm. So we we did say to Swan Pond, and the money has to be in, and all the residents have to to tie in or buy in or mm -hmm. agree. Right, mm -hmm. but let's take this. This let's just take a, you know, hypothetical scenario. So what you are saying is that we should, we should, we should direct or decide the deadline for that resident portion to come in, based on whatever timeline is going on here, in terms of budgeting, you know, DPW work, what's in the queue, and then what what we need to do to design it, et cetera. Is that what you are saying? And I think you have to have something in recordable to, form with the Registry okay, of Deeds. I, I, I want to say, yeah. it, 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 Swan Pond, let's use Swan Pond specifically. I mean, if we were to have a policy in place, maybe the policy should say, you come to a request for us to take a look at this. 
it's going to cost us $10,000 to evaluate and decide whether we want to do it or not. We need $5,000 up front. Mm -hmm. You put up five, we put up five. Yep. All right, put it up front, we'll do the evaluation. It says $350,000. Do you want to buy it or not? So that's an addition then. No, 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 that that's not the I'm thinking out loud here. Yeah. You're thinking about process. Right. How do we want it to right. work? That's Starting right. from you know, So if this board decides, you know, without time any approval through our current appropriations, whether it be the DPW or all the rest, that we want to do an evaluation based upon a request from a neighborhood, it's going to cost $10,000. So we'd be happy to entertain it if you want to split the cost with us. 50%. It's going to cost $10,000 to do the evaluation. Come in with your 5000 bucks. We'll put up the $5,000 and we'll evaluate it. Then both sides will say, <coughs> yeah, the project cost <coughs> is going to be $350,000. Do you still want to move forward? Right. Yes or no? So at, all the way through the process, mm -hmm. it's a 50-50 split. And then from a timing standpoint, you know, it's fine. We'll go get the <coughs> money appropriation. And again, we'll hash it out here whether it's going to be through the capital improvement planning process, you know, through June town meeting, or whether it's going to be through a separate town meeting warrant to undertake it, and what the timelines are. <coughs> you say, okay, we're going to do it. But it won't be until we'll appropriate the money this fiscal year. It won't be spent till next fiscal year because of the timing of the projects and the seasons. Right? Say, okay, and at this point, when we go out to bid, we need X number of dollars up front. And if the cost of the bids exceed this amount, additional funding needs to be Contribute. contributed, okay. you know, or we reject the bids. Hmm. You know, so the time is going to be driven by the bidding in the appropriation process. Okay. What, I'm just thinking, now, now I have my real estate attorney hat on. There is an issue that we have to think about is when is quote unquote approval by all residents given to start the project? And every deed holder that is giving that approval should sign something that's in recordable form at the Cambridge Registry of Deeds because that has to run with the land and be um, attached to future owners. What if in that eight, because I can see where it would be 18, 24 months for this project to be done, for any of these projects, you know, realistically, if a house is sold in the interim, that new owner has to be, uh, be on record that this restriction is on their house, otherwise it's not, it doesn't pass on to the new owner. Then you could go through all this project and then 18 months later, somebody buys one of the houses in the development, they don't give their authorization and then the project's done. Yeah, but you would, if these, this is why it should be in writing and that written authorization is going to be, be applicable to any successor and in interest, transfer. Yes, but it needs to be recorded at the Registry of Deeds. They have to be on notice it, of it. I think we're overthinking it. I don't think it needs to be recorded. It because, absolutely does. Let's say Mr. Smith signs off and signs that form with all the legal language that we need to be yeah. comfortable. And it includes any successor and in interest, any party to whom the parcel is subsequently conveyed or transferred. That then becomes a requirement for that to be disclosed in any subsequent transaction. No, that needs to be on record at the Registry of Deeds. Otherwise, that new owner is not on, not on notice of that requirement. It has to be a recordable form to be enforced. In. And in every single house, it's 75 bucks to record these documents. But you have to have it recordable because when they do their title exam when they're buying the property, they have to be on notice of the restriction. Uh, the new, what if Smith signs it and doesn't tell Jones that buying a house? Jones isn't subject to that, and Jones could put, I mean, I'm, these are real things I can see coming up as yeah, I'm sitting that's here. That's okay. If it's no. 75 bucks, it's 75 bucks. If they think it's a clear yeah. But I think we want to add. I, I, yeah. I think Smith yeah. and Jones know where the road is, and Smith. Jones is, is buying the house. Right, yeah. but Smith is going to tell Jones and buy Jones the house. Jones is new to the neighborhood, has no idea. You know what I'm saying. Yeah, I don't yeah. disagree, but that's fine. Yeah. You know, just include That should be built into the, pro, into the, um, the cost. Yeah. Uh, also into the policy too. All right. You got that one. I have it. Yes. I know. We gave I just don't know. I just don't know that we have the authority to do it. Well, that's but if they are willing, no, it's they're willing subjects. They're voluntarily doing it. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. yeah. And they, they should want to do it because it protects their project. Oh, sure. Right. sure. Against somebody <laughs> killing it at the last minute. Right. But all right. Someone other than us would like to participate in this discussion. May I? May I? You really want? Absolutely. This is a free reality. We need those sometimes. <laughs> yeah, we're into the we're into the thick of it. Do they cost though, money? So. Well, <laughs> well, no. <laughs> all right, that's all right. The, the first reality check comment is: I think I don't know if it would be town council or somebody else, but I think you're right. Yeah. Um, that. That's a good comment. You should never. <laughs> no. Well, I don't think you are. But okay. anyway, 
Right now, I think you are. <laughs> <laughs> I, disagree. I object. I disagree. I totally disagree. You should never assume because someone signs a consent form that they're ever going to tell anyone else that they have. So if somebody goes to sell a house, you can't assume they're going to tell their realtor or anyone who would be going to buy the house that they've signed it. It needs to show the chain of title of the registry. Yeah. yeah. So in some way, it would need to be Because you're right about the seasons in New England and you can't count on getting anything out to bid and pay promptly. Um, I think you do need to figure out to what extent, and you're right there, but you don't know to what extent. Uh, as a community, you have the right to tie up somebody legally or not. I think you need to check with the appropriate legal authority to see whether or not you can ask someone to sign a consent saying, yes, I have to I get consent to have you pay my parcel, my allotment of, of the street, um, and then bind them to it. And or it's essentially voluntary and they can withdraw at any time. Second of all, I don't know if you can check with other municipalities to see if, if someone has already cut that gordian knot and knows the answer about whether or not you can do something incredibly minor, but it's grating at me. Um, shortly after I had my accident, I was proofreaded for the New England Journal of Medicine. And um, residents, when you talk about picking up the residence portion, it would be S apostrophe every time, and at least once it was T apostrophe S, which would actually make it the singular, not the plural. And I think you want to <laughs> That was my reality. I like that. Yeah. Which, which, which bullet was that? It was one How did you one miss one that? Of the most earlier How do you win the arguments with her? You just lose all the arguments. That's smart, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You're Thanks, Elizabeth. So I guess we have a lot of. Yeah. Why don't we put this on the agenda to discuss further at our next meeting? Does the board wish to designate a member to participate in the conversation with town council? I think that that's going to be necessary to make sure we're addressing some of these legal questions. I would be happy to volunteer for that. that my members would like to do that. I'd be happy to let you volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was a little bitter. I second that. Okay. So I can, guess we'll... But I, the, well, the, I was just going to ask, can you do like a, a, like a, you know, instead of by bullets, can you just do like a one page, you know, mm. it starts here, goes here, goes there, just so yeah. we can just graphically see it? It's just taking what you have for words and putting it into a PowerPoint flowchart, just to make it easier for us to... To sure. understand right. what's going on. And understanding this came together rather quickly. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you did Lost on our half an hour discussion. Thank you. This is a very yeah. involved thing yeah. you guys put yeah. together. Yeah. It's a very good job. Thank you. Granted, we're arguing what the comments go on yeah. but <laughs> it's a very <laughs> impressive. Apostrophes. That will never get <laughs> I would never let that happen. <laughs> it's a pet peeve my, of mine. I think the DPW director and I are just concerned that you know we'll we'll have fourteen sign offs show up from Swamp Pond Road and the question will be are we ready to proceed with the project if we don't want to be the obstacle to it. That's why we wanted to move on this quickly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what the timeline is, what the status is with the residents, but. No, I think it was made clear and the residents were here that everybody had to sign off on that. That was really clear and direct. We can go back to that meet, meet that. No, that we definitely meeting, made that clear. That no, it was, it was one of the right. uh, Yeah, that was yeah. very clear. So I don't, uh, are we looking for 19? Whatever the number is, I'm yeah. sorry, I, I, I don't mean to Oh, miss. all right, okay. <laughs> oh, Ms. Gonzalez, I'm sorry. I'm just um, playing around in my head with, is there a timeline that would be perfect for, that would line up right, that we could make it so that, okay, your proposal has to be given to us by this time so that we can propose it at this town meeting so that it can go out to bid mm -hmm. at this point in this so that it can move forward can we have just a like a timeline so you can't just randomly come and petition us if you want to petition us it has to be by this date so that it can fall in line so sure. that it can move quickly we, we could do that I, I do think you know to be clear it, it's likely to take at least two town meeting votes to advance these projects 
one for any resources that might be needed to assist the DPW right. in coming up with an estimate, and one for the approval of the construction. And as as has been noticed, as has been noted, even with a June town meeting approval for construction, highly unlikely we'll be doing construction that construction season. It'll be the next year. But I think we could work into the Mr. Walner suggesting the flow chart, maybe you know ideal dates. If yeah. you want to keep this moving on the fastest yes. possible schedule, right. here's when you'll apply. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> Mr. Ms. Gonzalez, you all set? Mm -hmm. Mr. O'Leary. I think that this should be money. And again, it was ten thousand dollars for the Swan Pond, and that was a pretty significant project. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. there should be money in the DPW budget to react to residents' requests, and at the boards favorable action move forward. We shouldn't have to go to town meeting for yeah. five or ten thousand dollars to investigate something to see if we want to do it. To me, you know, it should That's be our of system of government. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. But no, as part of the appropriation process, there should be money in the DPW budget to react to residents' requests and at the board's, you know, favorable recommendation to move forward so on. So we it, don't have to move for forward. That part you know, of the it. administration isn't going to necessarily DPW director go ahead and because someone requested it, go ahead and do it. It's going to come to the board. The board's going to act favorably on it or not. If they act favorably on it, then the money's available to do it immediately. Rather than waiting, you know, if they come in in February, you won't get until June, right. you know, and then you won't be able to find out until October or November, you know, from once the consultants are done. Um, it just doesn't make no, I, doesn't I like make that. sense. So you know, you put in ten or fifteen thousand dollars in the general operating budget for the DBW for outside professional services, of which part of it's here to request state by the general public for situations such as this. And again, I don't anticipate a lot of action activity. Right. Yeah. Uh, we haven't had it in thirty years. Haven't had a lot. You know, maybe three or four projects. We've been dealing with this for thirty years. Swan Pond, right? <laughs> this one, yeah, this one we've been dealing with. Do we have Close a, a general standing appropriation for betterment? Under the betterments bylaw? No. No. My concern, Steve, is like every department that comes before us in budget season, they like have every dollar used up. I, I don't see any like ten thousand dollar contingency fund for. I mean, you know, put it in the town administrator's budget. Again, I think the town administrator's budget is light as far as professional services and, and things of that nature. We're talking every year. Put put it up a little bit so that it allows some flexibility within the calendar year and within appropriation time or timelines to. Work on a more timely basis. Just makes it, it's not a lot of money, and it needs to be there. And if it isn't used, it gets reverted back, reappropriated. But <coughs> you shouldn't have to go to town meeting for five or ten thousand dollars if the board's in favor of taking a look at it. And half of the cost is going to be if the policy is going to say half right. the cost is going to be shared by the residents. Right. You know, let's take a look at so so. Then we go to town meeting. But if they come in in February, by June. Do you propose it, or it's dead in the water? You know? So, I, I just, we shouldn't be appropriating every dollar. Well, it's appropriated through town meeting. There needs to be some flexibility from the administrative standpoint and from the board standpoint to react to requests from residents in certain situations, not just this one, but you know, we shouldn't have to go to town meeting for $5,000 to take a look at something. You know, and it's, because otherwise, if I'm those residents, I'm going to the citizen's petition room. Mm -hmm. you know, and that's what we're trying to avoid. We're trying to set up a, a policy that's going to work within certain timelines so things can be done on a timely basis and determinations can be made. And if we're pigeonholing ourselves into a situation where, oh, well, we haven't got the money to take a look at it, but you're willing to put up the money to assist us to do it, it doesn't make much sense. And it's not a lot of money. No, right. So maybe a more um, delineated process that starts with that, with, you know, we'll look into it first, evaluate it mm -hmm. first to determine if it should move forward. And as part of that assessment, any experts hired or utilized, you pay half down, pays half not to exceed a specific amount. Yeah, but I mean, we, we know it, it. You know, the town spent ten thousand dollars through town meeting, appropriated the money to take a look at it, mm -hmm. and that was twenty-seven hundred feet of right. roadway with the drainage and everything else involved with right. it, a significant amount of work. Right. And while it was cursory, it gave us a good, you know, good idea yeah. and a very conservative estimate as to what the project costs were going to be. 
Anything else left in town in this particular category are small roads. Mm -hmm. Not near a public water supply, too. Right. 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 A yeah. lot less complicated. Fire right. drainage systems. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, you know, so if you have five or ten thousand, uh, five thousand dollars, you know, within the operating budget for professional services just available in case something comes up, whether it's this or something else. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it kind of makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Rather than going to town meeting every single time you need. Mm -hmm. Five bucks doesn't doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> That's what we do. <laughs> no, it's not what we do generally. But it's, uh, in this particular case, we did because of the citizens' petition. You know, we right. asked them to be patient, came up with a plan, get ten thousand instead of buy it, biting off the whole thing, find out what the cost, and quantify it, and then go back to town meeting. But in a policy now that we're developing. We should have the resources available to react to that. No, that makes sense. Oh, I think I think we we have talked a lot about this, and I know that the, the, that's an awful lot for the town administrator to take back. So what I would ask the members to do is, um, in these areas of improvement, for, so that we can get this on paper and take another look at it at the next meeting, review it a little bit more, to maybe make a more firm process or add in these extra sort of considerations is put that on paper and send it to the town administrator so we can consider these other options I guess for this but I don't I think we do we we kind of are overthinking it a little bit I don't think we need a recordable instrument I think you can just write in the written authorization you absolutely do. for example you could write in the written authorization. we don't require it in betterments you say this is Finding it and inures to the benefit of your successes, and you're required to disclose it in any and conveyance that's, and or, that's or recorded. transfer. And that's recorded. No, that we're not. Betterments are recorded. No, but we we would be not accepting this road, but we would be making that requirement upon the particular participant and making it their obligation. And, it doesn't work that and way. And holding us well. harmless. It doesn't work that way. Real well, well, I'm just saying we yeah. are overcomplicating something that you know the fact right. of the matter is I love to hear the lawyers debate yeah. no no <laughs> when they, no seriously okay when a town does a betterment they record a notice of betterment listing all the people that are affected so everyone so prospective owners are on notice you absolutely have to do that here otherwise you're gonna have, you run the risk of somebody coming in that bought the house at the last minute saying I don't want this and now you're stuck and well, the town's invested all these resources into the project you're it's you're talking about one document recording that this is a prospective roadway improvement and it affects these parcels. That's what you're talking but about. But the people have to sign it. Similar to what you're doing well, with the betterment. A little different. The town makes a notice of betterment and lists all the properties that are affected by the town's putting a sewer in on these particular streets. Not North Reading, by the way. One. This is an example. <laughs> um, and they'll list all the properties that are affected. So if somebody's looking to buy that house, they can see, oh, a betterment's coming here. And they can't. But a better match is different because better right. don't require everybody's approval. That's where a little bit different than this right. project. So we're, you know, we are creating this policy which deals with the anomaly private ways. We keep looking at it in the lens of Swan Pond, which is really quite different in all of the contingencies <coughs> and well, it covers all most categories that we could ever think of, which, <laughs> no. which is good. Yeah. You know, I know. Could, yeah. this it is was all a good, good one much. to cut our teeth on. But I think just if you could give your specific, the specific things that you think should be, you know, modified individually, not to each other, not to one another, but just directly to Mr. Gilberto, and let's see if, if you know, in it, all of his spare time he can. <laughs> Maybe I can get it right. <laughs> incorporate. Well, we'll call town council. These types of yeah. things. I think you should keep on paper what you have as presented. Mm -hmm. And we'll do and a marked then, up version. And then let's mark it up and see if we can come up with something. I think this is a, an amazing start. I yes. think it's, you know, we're 70% of the way there. So. Excuse me. Hopefully the residents of Swan Pond are 90% or 100% yeah. of the <laughs> interesting way. Interesting if it never comes forward, you know. Getting everything. All right, so so... Let's, if we can move on, we'll, we will keep this on the agenda for our further discussion and further um, policy making. All right, so our next order of business is 
to open space and recreation advisory committee approve the charge and establish a committee and designate the board members madam chair Mr. through Gilberto. you just a brief description this is really yes. a, a committee that's being proposed by the uh, town planner and the um, parks and recreation operations manager to work with a consultant who will uh, be drafting our open space and recreation plan which is something that we are required to do to be eligible for state grant funding for certain environmental projects um, you know basically they're recommending that there be an advisory committee to work with the consultant who we've already gone through a procurement process for um, in uh, in order to um, to advise the consultant which will be the Metropolitan Area Planning Council in developing the uh, the plan um, to establish the committee, um, we've basically recommended that the board vote to establish it. It would be a, a standalone committee that would sunset at the conclusion of the planning process uh, when the select board signs off on the plan to be submitted to the state. Um, you see that we've identified here that they would be would be small, represented by the Parks and Recreation Department, uh, Operations Manager and Parks Director, the Land Utilization Committee, the Planning Department, the Conservation Department, the select board if it wishes to have a member participate and the Recreation Committee. And so we're recommending a two-step process, first to vote to establish the committee, and then second to vote to appoint members to the committee um, as well. And it would, the committee would be subject to the open meeting law, so they would be posted meetings and the public would be welcome to attend um, the meetings as well. Okay. Do members have any questions? Do we have a motion? There is a motion to establish the committee yes. and then also a motion to appoint its members. So, Madam Chair, I move to establish the Open Space and Recreation Plan, OSRP Committee, and to approve charge as recommended by the Town Planner. Second. I have a motion and I have a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous? Okay. And I believe there's a second motion second. for the appointment of the members? There is. Um, are we ch choosing a board member or are choosing not to have a board member before we? Yes, make I would that recommend motion? that. Yes. Don't all raise your hands at once. <laughs> I guess the question is should it be a liaison versus a member? Right. What? I think that the, the no, your member. there to be an actual member of yeah, the committee. Voting member. I mean, you may wish to be one of the liaisons to the committees that are mentioned, mentioned in the mem membership, but it does not have to be. We'll uh, get a volunteer after we after we. Uh, <laughs> we can establish yeah, the committee and not designate yes. the board member at this point. The committee will okay. probably begin its work through, because I mean, of the timeline. Right? I think I it's don't. a I think it's a great idea to have a board member serving on the committee and um, whatever we the have committee liaisons? ultimately determines comes to the board anyway for consideration. Do we have liaisons? Yeah, it's on I think it's everybody. Yeah, but it's split. Um, Who's parks I mean, and recs right liaisons, right? Who's yeah. parks and recs liaisons? No, we have an LUC. Actually, I'm LUC. I'm conservation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Hold on. So I'll put my glasses on. Each one of us will take a turn at each meeting. Parks and Rec. It's alphabetical. Is it alphabetical? It might be under recreation as opposed to park recreation. LUC is you, Leanne, right? I'm LUC, yeah. Oh, you are. No, it's not on there. I'm missing my should it be? forms. Well, I think we can at least we can just determine the member, but at least let's consider the vote to make the committee establish the committee membership. So we, don't a, we don't have a parks and rec laser. Parks and rec doesn't exist. Hmm. That's, That's interesting. Is it probably something else? Or name differently? Should it be? No. We have a MAPC rep. You can have an FEC rep. LUC rep. Oh, the LUC liaison. Hmm. You can have FEC. Rich. No. No. Okay. Hey, Kate. What is that? You have an FEC rep. Yes. What's that? That's how come I know. That's how come I know we have. All right. It's interesting. Should there be a liaison to the Parks and Rec? Parks and Rec, yeah. Sign it on the list. 
That's interesting. We have, we have a lot of obligations. Huh? Yes, we do. I, I wouldn't mind it. Can we dominate? But no. <laughs> we'll do it worse. Yeah. We're going to, by show of hands, find out who might want to volunteer for well, this. I mean, I think if Let's if at least establish the committee membership. Yeah, I think if one of the two newest members are willing to do it, no, just from a mm -hmm. continuity standpoint, there's at least two and a half years here that you're going to be participating in this right. thing. Um, that would be helpful. Right. Rather, you know, next year, if Andy takes it and he's up and decides not to run or gets defeated, then we got to do it all over again and someone's getting into it, you know. Kate and I have a year and a half left. And so. Okay. So if one of the two newer members is interested, then that makes it a little bit easier and it lends for some more continuity. And it's actually a pretty interesting project. How about if we establish the committee membership first? That's a good idea. And then we'll move to appoint our member. Okay. Madam Chair, I move to appoint the following members for terms to expire December 2020. Maureen Stevens, Parks and Rec Department. Marty Tilton, Parks and Rec Department. Danielle McKnight, Planning Department. Randy Mason, Conservation Commission. Rita Mullen, Recreation Committee. What about so, Phil Hertz? So let me. Oh, you see. Let oh, yeah. You know what? He's, he's, not, he's not listed. It's just an oversight. So oh, it should be. So Phil um, Hertz. Phil Hertz. L U C. L U C. P H I L H E R T Z. H E R T Z. H E R T Z. H E. Before we get to appointing specifically named members, we have just created this committee. The membership of the committee should be the next vote, so that should be. The, the Parks and Rec Director, the uh, appointee from the LUC, right? The Planning Director. Yes. The Conservation Commission appointee, the Select Board member, and the Parks and Recreation appointee. It shouldn't be specifically named individuals yet because we're creating this committee. So, so when these individuals, if and when they go, that we'll know a committee membership has to be made up of these particular designated positions or designees. In the previous motion, we referenced the attachment, and it's only the first page of the attachment which describes the committee, but not the specific members. So the seats were already created. Okay. I think the oversight is when we listed the proposed members, we neglected Mr. Hertz. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. So as part of... Uh, we have Mr. two Mr. suggestions for Parks and Recreation Department as far as the list goes. So it says a minimum of five stakeholders, but not limited to. So yeah, to, to your point, Madam Chair, if you were talking about, we're going to say the Parks and Recreation Director, the what's Marty's title? Parks Director. Parks Director, Recreation Director. Right. Will be a member, you know, uh, a designee from the Land Utilization Committee, uh, the Town Planner. Designee from right. the Con Conservation Commission, a designee from the Recreation Committee, and then a designee from the Select Board. Can you say that again slowly, Mr. O'Leary? Because that's what the motion should be the committee makeup, committee membership makeup shouldn't really be name specific. It should be post specific or designee of specific. But you, you said that rather quickly, and the I just want to make sure. <laughs> A recreation planning committee shall be represented by it's a Maureen is parks director. So we're talking about positions. not the people but the positions. Yes, so, right. so the parks and recreation department operations manager. Okay, so parks and recreation operation manager. The parks director. Parks director. Parks director. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A designee for the Land Utilization Committee, mm -hmm. uh, the Town Planner, a designee from the Conservation Commission, a designee from the Parks and Recreation Committee, and a designee from the Select Board. Right. So I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. And I have a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Now we move on to appointing the specific individuals to serve. Before we do that, because it's a collective list of names, of the newer members of the select board, could you raise your hand if you like to volunteer? Eeny, meeny, miny, moe. Can we do it together? Uh, 
Well, here's the only thing so I... So if one can't make it, the other... I well, mean, here's my only thing I'll say is, um, is that I fully suspect that when we have the sewage and we have the facilities master plan and we have the CPC plan going through, <coughs> I've been proposing for a long time, for years now, that we're going to need a task force. Right. That should include a person from the select board. Mm -hmm. And I actually like think... That. Well, I think I've had the most right. involvement with I all agree. those topics. So I'm not saying I should do it. I'm just saying somebody from... For the what? For this project? No. 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 For I think that in order to implement any of these three or two or three of major objectives, I think you're going to need a task force, somebody from CPC, somebody from. I mean, you're going to need to go across yeah. departments to make it. Work. Well, wastewater. We had one. Uh, remember, Steve? You remember that? There was a wastewater task force. Remember when? I want to say the last iteration, seven, eight years ago. There was actually a committee. I think it's still in the books. The members have turned out. I'm just the expecting that. I, I think I, you want to keep yourself open. For I that. do want to. I oh, do. Okay. I, I want to. I want to make myself available yeah. for that. So therefore, that he, went like this. How? <laughs> <laughs> he went like this. How? He went like this. I love to oh, do I it. Not that either, <laughs> right, is, not that either is a bad choice right. to be involved. But I just think it'd be better utilized. There. So I am. So, so I am not putting my name. I am crossing names out here. Correct. No, so you're going to put your name. I put. I mean, we just said what we were doing. We just we just made that motion and voted on. Okay, which isn't in the packet, which didn't make. So now you're yes. going to make it, including now you're the, names, name the names, and including yourself. Name the names, including name the names, and include Gonzalez. yourself. If you want to do it, lady, you're, you're not forcing the door. Oh. No, no, no. You had your hand up, so you did kind still of volunteer, though. It's still up. It's still up. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, is that Leanne? Is that okay? Does that make yes. sense? Yeah. No Fine. Yeah. Maureen Stevens. Do I have to? I'm just doing the names. You move so I just say for Parks and Recreation, say Maury Parks. Stevens and Marty Tilton. You move the following individuals. I move the following individuals um, Be as appointed. members yes. for terms to expire December 2020. Maureen Stevens, Parks and Rec Department. Marty Tilton, Parks and Rec Department. Danielle McKnight, Planning Department. Randy Mason, Con Conservation Commission. Rita Mullen, Recreation Committee. Bill Hertz, LUC Committee. Leanne Gonzalez, select board member. Okay. Second. Me neither. I have a motion and a second <laughs> with a uh, vote call list. Or are we okay to just don't have a vote? vote. Okay. I just have a All vote. right. All those. Any okay. further discussion? All those in favor? Uh, <laughs> unanimous. Right. There you go. Congratulations. You're on another committee. Yeah. Yeah. Committee to give another monthly meeting. That's a good position, yeah. Yes, Actually. yeah, it's a great one. Okay, we have next order of business: vote to approve the retiree health insurance plan. Mr. Gilberto. Madam Chair, the board did in fact vote to approve the 2020 retirement health insurance plan for Blue Cross Blue Shield subscribers. However, we have now received the um, renewal for the Tufts health plan, uh, similarly similarly favorable at a 4.5 percent increase. Um, the only plan design change other than the CMS, Centers for Medicaid Services, um, ordered changes is the routine annual eye exam copay will increase from $10 to $15. We are asking the, vote to, the, the board to rescind its vote made at the October 7th meeting and revote the approval of both plans, and that is all worded into one motion. Okay. And by the way, this has also already been reviewed with the Insurance Advisory Committee. So, Madam Chair, I move to rescind the vote of October 7th, 2019, and to vote as follows. I move to approve the retiree health insurance plans, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, MedEx, no plan design changes, and Tufts Medicare preferred one plan change, routine eye exam copay increase $10 to $15 for calendar year 2020. Second. I have a motion and a second by Mr. Schultz. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Okay. Conservation Commission appointments is our next order of business. Madam Chair, I move to place in nomination the following name for appointment as a member of the Conservation Commission to fill an unexpired term through December 31st, 2020. One opening. Thomas Sanchez. Second. I have a motion and a second. Do I have any discussion? Mr. Uh, O'Leary. Uh, Mr. Sanchez was one of the newly appointed uh, all, you know, alternate members, uh, associate members uh, last year, uh, an active participant, and 
upon consultation and with the recommendation of the chair of the Conservation Commission, uh, we're recommending that the board appoint Mr. Sanchez. Okay, wonderful. I have a And again, this is to fulfill uh, Mr. Weiss's uh, unexpired term. Okay. Motion and a second. Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Sanchez. Mr. Walner. Mr. Sanchez. Mr. Schultz. Mr. Sanchez. Ms. Gonzalez. Mr. Sanchez. And Mr. Sanchez. Unanimous. Okay, our next order of business is approval of legal bills. Madam Chair, I move to approve legal bills for September 2019 in the amount of $19,510.20 as follows. Colt and Page General, $5,665.20. Colt and Page PC Labor, $10,101. 20 Elm Street 40B Project, $3,744. Grand total, $19,510.20. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Now we're on to the, is that it for legal bills? Just the one yes. Time. Now our next order of business is the town administrator's report. Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I attached a copy of the town's appeal to the State Department of Housing and Community Developments denial of our safe harbor concerning the 20 Elm Street proposed Chapter 40B project. The appeal was authorized by the Zoning Board of Appeals on October 10th and is uh, now posted on the town's website. The community impact team issued a parent alert concerning black market vaping, which I attached to the report. The Director of Human Resources recently traveled to Croatia uh, earlier this month. He presented a town of North Reading Pin to the Honorable W. Robert Kohorst, which is the who is the U.S. Ambassador to Croatia, and I included a copy of the picture of the presentation in my report. Um, there was also a picture of Mr. Collins' attendance at a joint military maneuver um, attached to my report. So I thank him for spreading, spreading the uh, North Reddick diplomacy across the ocean in his travels. Attached, please find a copy of the town's annual stormwater permitting report. Flu clinics organized by the health department have been ongoing. The final clinic is Wednesday, October 30th, this Wednesday for children ages 3 to 18, and a full schedule is attached. I'm pleased to report that Police Chief Michael Murphy has designated the responsibilities of Executive Officer to Lieutenant Thomas Romeo. Lieutenant Romeo has been with the department since 1985, rising to the rank of Sergeant in 2008 and Detective Lieutenant in 2012. And this assignment was uh, recently agreed to with the, in negotiations with the Police Department Superior Officers uh, Union um, in the agreement that was signed earlier this fall. Water Department hydrant flushing has been ongoing and is anticipated to conclude this Wednesday, October 30th on the east side of town. Andover is also flushing their system in the vicinity of our connections on Main Street and Central Street and is scheduled to conclude their flushing on November 29th. Household Hazardous Waste Day is Saturday, November 2nd from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. That's this coming Saturday at the DPW yard. Please see the attached flyer. Fall curbside yard waste collection will occur on Saturdays, November 23rd and December 14th. Please see the attached flyer. As usual, the DPW yard will be open Saturdays through November from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Sundays in November only from 12 noon to 4 p.m. for leaf disposal. The police department will once again be participating in No Shave November. Chief Murphy will be releasing additional information later this week. To assist residents, installers, real estate agents, and anyone dealing with septic system related issues, the health department has posted a guideline for reference on the town website. The guideline may be found on the, on the website and I've attached a copy for the board's reference. Finally, attached please find an updated mosquito advisory from the health department. While mosquito activity is decreasing, residents are reminded that the true end of the season occurs when we see four consecutive hours of temperatures of 28 degrees or less. And that concludes my comments. Thank you. That was almost as long as the meeting. Can had a lot you to say. just Ooh. explain the, the purpose for no shave November? Is it yeah. to save on the cost of razor blades? <laughs> <laughs> it is uh, to uh, raise uh, awareness to uh, uh, 
to particular issues, and I, I'd rather defer to the police chief who's going to put out a press release, I think, oh, in the next couple great. days. But it, it, it is tied to awareness. It, yes. <laughs> All right. Any questions of the TA? Any, any, other, any other old and new business to the members? No. Motion, motion to adjourn. Just, uh, just, uh, just quickly again. Oh, it, sorry, it, Mr. O'Leary. Uh, just on a couple of things that were already uh, brought up earlier during uh, a board members' reports. Uh, but first responder day, you know, I guess it's today, and uh, I know uh, Mrs. Gonzalez and myself both have first responders as uh, kids now who are kids or are adults are out there uh, every day. Uh, so there's certainly a greater appreciation in our household, mm -hmm. a little bit longer in her household since her husband uh, was a first responder for many years. But again, uh, uh, thank you to the chamber for recognizing that and putting on the event that they did today. Um, again, town meeting attendance, as Mrs. Gonzalez brought up, it was heartening to see so many people there and uh, a level of activity. And I got a lot of comments um, that evening, but also even afterwards, subsequently, uh, since town meeting bumped into a lot of people who um, were somewhat entertained uh, by the process. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I think it stimulated some interest, and so we're going to see some additional uh, participants, which is, a, which is a good thing. You know, the more the merrier, and we want to hear from everybody. And, um, we, we hope that uh, continued participation remains high and uh, interest remains high. And maybe with that, come some more people who are interested in serving on town boards and committees. Uh, but they did get a good picture of how town meeting can work or not work, uh, work well. They got uh, a lot of uh, exposure to uh, some parliamentary maneuvering, uh, which is not usually happening. So it really was a very good and interesting meeting. So I'm glad they participated. I hope they, uh, people continue to, uh, to come and uh, voice their opinion because it is a perfect form of government. Your vote actually counts. Mm -hmm. you, know, you raise your hand and you count it and you determine and how much money's gonna be spent and what's gonna be as much as our vote. That's People right. think we have it, some, yeah. That's right, everybody has an equal vote. So I think it's a wonderful thing. And again, Halloween is Thursday, so just be careful. Uh, it may be raining, may not be raining, but the kids mm -hmm. will be out. So just be cognizant of it and I hope everybody's safe. Mm -hmm. That's all, Matt Chair, thank you. Great, anyone else? Motion to adjourn. <laughs> I have a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Sure, I'll second that. <laughs> All those in favor. Aye. Aye.